Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Now, today we're not going to sing that song, even though it's pretty exciting. We'll get back to that one, too. But uh, as we pre- prepare our hearts for worship today, um, let's just allow ourselves to be still in the presence of the Lord. Father, as we rest in your presence this morning, make us aware of your grace and your love that is being lavished upon us. More than we could ever need, more than we could ever use, God, you are a God of abundance. You are the God who has made it possible for us to share in all things with you in glory. Father God, you've called us here today to be energized and to be encouraged. God, the Christian walk is hard. Thank you that because of what you've done, Jesus, we can too be more than conquerors. And we get to conquer Jesus because of your great love for us that leads us in paths of righteousness that leads us in the ways of peace. Father God, let us be men and women of peace. God, as we open our hearts this morning to sing your praise, I pray that you would set our hearts free to do so. Because in your presence there is no shame, there is no guilt. Just light, purity, holiness, love. Help us to bask in that, God, as we fix our eyes upon you today. The author and perfecter of our faith, Jesus, won't you lead us today? It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Well, let's stand together folks as we prepare. Let's sing together. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy, but holy trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within. My anchor, my anchor holds within the veil. Christ Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, 
trying to teach us that we've got to get our eyes on Jesus. He was our example and he's told us and taught us to follow him. And so as we sing this hymn, it's very familiar. The verses may be new to some of us. I actually just learned the verses this week, uh, but they're full of great truth. But the chorus will be familiar and it's turn your eyes upon Jesus. And so if you never heard the, the full hymn, then 
just let the, the lyrics soak into your soul this morning. It goes like this. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life for Come on up. How's everybody doing? Good, good. Who here? has ever had to take care of animals before? Like, what kind of animals are we talking about? Kendall, what are you talking about? <coughs> Dogs and chickens, Jaren? Cows and chickens. Cows and chickens. Yeah. Dogs. Have you ever taken care of an animal? An animal? A dog's. Yep, what about you? Turtle and a cat. Some fish. Once, once upon a time, we had those two. Yeah. You have a fish? Ever, you ever have a fish? Used to? Yeah, we did too. We used to have fish. Anyway, so how about when you're taking care of these animals, anybody ever lost one? Dang, you have? What was that like? You lost one of your puppies? Did that make you sad when you lost it? Yeah, sure. It makes us sad, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a kind of loss too, isn't it? That's sad. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah. We're kind of going down. A, that was a sad note. Let's turn it around to the happy note, okay? In, 
in, uh, in Luke chapter 15, Jesus talks about a story about losing stuff. Three different stories. But the one that I want to share with you is kind of near and dear to my heart because what he's trying to get us to understand is that when we lose stuff that's precious to us and we find it again, it's really, really great, isn't it? You ever lost something and then found it again? Yeah, your phone. Yeah, and what was yours? Is that what you said, your phone? Oh, yeah, that one time it was just sitting on your bed upside down and we couldn't see it because it wasn't lighting up, you know? That was for you too? Yeah, it's kind of tricky, isn't it? Well, the, yeah, Cade. Yeah, I, I know what that's like. Well, I have these are my favorite earbuds. And, uh, and they're wireless. Hey, wait a minute. I'm missing one. I had them when I got up here today. Maybe they're up here. Can you guys, maybe, maybe it's hiding. Maybe, oh, you already found it? Where? Oh, oh, it is there. Did you find it? Oh, good job, you guys. Thank you. Will you guys celebrate with me? Yay, we did it. We found it. And that's what Jesus was saying when he was talking about the parable of the lost sheep. People were, were so mad. The religious establishment was so mad about him talking with sinners and, and, and associating with people who they would think were less than. They didn't want to be seen with those kind of people. And Jesus, his whole purpose for coming was to find the lost. And so he said, don't you, when you lose a sheep and find it, you take it and you celebrate with all your friends and you show them? And Jesus said, that's just what heaven is like. When we accept Jesus, when we get saved through his grace, there's a party in heaven. There's a party in heaven. Did you know that? Do you guys like to party? I like to party. We like to get excited, right? Do you guys not really like to get excited? I've seen you guys get excited before, so I know you like to party. You've been at the youth nights. I've seen you. You guys love to have fun. You're going to be in a tractor pool? Well, oh, yeah? And is that going to give you joy? Yeah, that's the kind of joy that I'm talking about, okay? You're excited about that. Jesus, genuinely, his heart gets excited when lost sinners realize that he is the one they have to come to for salvation. It joys his heart, and there's joy in the presence of the angels. God is overjoyed when we come to salvation in Jesus. And so I want us to realize you guys were so helpful. It was so fast that it almost didn't even get to be the example, but you guys were so fast to help me find that. Do you think that sometimes people are walking around sad because they haven't found Jesus yet? Do you guys think that you could help them find him? Yes. I think you could. I think you know him. So let's, let's ask Jesus to give us boldness because that's going to take boldness, isn't it? All right. Jaron's ready. We're ready to pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for these boys. God, for all the little ones listening today. God, help us, just like that song said, go to a world that is dying and tell of this perfect salvation that is found in you, Jesus. You love us, Jesus. Thank you for coming. Thank you for saving us. Help us to follow you. Help these children to find those lost souls out there, those lost sheep in desperate need for you, the great shepherd, Jesus. Help them to lead you to him. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, do you all want to do some buckets? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, you set that down.
them. All right, family of God, let's continue to find out what's coming up. Birthdays are coming up. Where are my September babies? One, two, three, four. Yes, no, no. Four babies today. All right. Well, everybody, let's sing happy birthday, shall we? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you all in this brand new year. Wonderful, wonderful. May you see him and know him in a new way. Anybody get married? Yes, one. We got an anniversary family. Yay, how many years? 36. 36. Woo! That's good, that's good. Yeah, we're going to start doing that. I always forgot to ask how many years. That's like the coolest part of the anniversary. How many years have you guys stuck together? This is awesome. Um, I just wanted to uh, throw that out there again one last time. If, uh, if you're interested and haven't yet um, learned how to use um, our tech stuff over there and want to learn how, we've got several folks who'd be happy to train you, and um, we're, getting, we're starting a rotation. So uh, we would love to get some new blood in there and, and help out. So if you're interested, if you've ever messed with PowerPoint or, or want to learn how to run the uh, soundboard, we'd be happy to teach you. So... Uh, it doesn't matter how old you are either. There's no age requirement. Younger folks are actually probably going to be better at it than we are. So, uh, so that's still open, okay? There's still opportunities to serve within the service in the media team. Um, Adult Sunday School um, just wrapped up their study of Mark, and they're starting Acts next week. Um, so, uh, and that's a, a study led by Dr. David Jeremiah, and, and um, Mana is got her book this morning, and so she's got her homework for the week, and, uh, and I know that she's probably just as excited as I am to, uh, to share that kind of knowledge uh, with you all. So it's at 9 a.m. every Sunday morning till 9.45. Bring your Bible. It'll really help, and, um, and that's right downstairs in the, uh, the children's classroom, actually, so uh, that'll work out. Speaking of children, our youth classes are starting up in uh, just a couple weeks now, September 18th. Um, through the 23rd, it's going to be our first cycle, and, uh, and so there's sign-up sheets in the back to help with lunch for those kids and, uh, and f- for the teachers, and, uh, and, and already, I believe three of them are already filled out, and if you filled out today, then, then even more taken care of. I think we only have just a couple weeks left where uh, a, a meal would need to be provided, and, and you would just be bringing a, a hot or cold meal, it doesn't really matter, whatever is good for lunch that you normally make. Um, is good for us. And so we would appreciate that, and you can sign up in the back. Perryman's Kickin' Chicken is back, you guys, next month. We're a month away from our fundraiser. And so um, remember, this is a a fundraiser. It's going to be a lot of fun, but uh, remember to be generous because uh, we're raising funds. And uh, and so that'll be be good, and it's, it's so worth it. If you missed out last time, don't miss it this time. Even if you don't really eat chicken all that much, it's worth the splurge. Um, bonfire and Hayride, October 15th, next month. We're kind of quiet in September, so we're going to move through these. And Trunk or Treat, of course, the, the candy deposits have already come in. And, um, and so please don't forget. And, uh, and we get that opportunity on October 31st from 5 to 7 to love on those kids. Um, well, we're in a new month, so uh, the second Tuesday of this month will uh, be the women's devotional at 9 a.m., and that happens every Tuesday, every second Tuesday at 9 a.m. Um, our offering, of course, if you're visiting with us, is located in our back. We just give it through um, into that big jar, and, uh, and our missions fund, of course, we do our, our change with our buckets now, but if you still miss the buckets and, and want to give to our mission, you still can through the small jar, and always thank you for giving so generously and with a heart full of joy. Um, it's, it's good. It's good to, uh, to be in a place where I don't have to beg you for money. So you guys just keep on giving generously as the Lord leads you to. Um, as we uh, get ready for the message, we have quite a bit 
here on, on our list of, of prayer requests. So if you have any others, raise your hand after um, I list these off. We're going to be praying for healing and for endurance for our, um, our folks who are uh, suffering with cancer. We're lifting up Eva Shepherd and Carrie Ralph, little Simon and Ashley uh, Bowen, Frank Root and Memphis. Uh, we're also lifting up um, the Vansel family continually, and uh, on Tuesday, um, Brenda's father-in-law, Sonny, has a surgery, and so um, we're just there asking us to pray for safe travel and for a successful surgery, and um, we're continuing to lift up Marita Rissler, the Gardeners, the Tolsons, the Troutman family, Sharon, Four Acre, um, and uh, we're lifting up Johnny's son, Chris, he smashed his finger at work. Yeah, Chris um, smashed his finger under a forklift at work today or this week. And so they had to, to sew him up on his hand. And so she's going to help him because he thinks he's going to be going back to work on Tuesday. And, uh, and so she's going to try to help him and get him a little guard or maybe try to keep him from sticking his hand into some tires this week because he uses his hands for work. So we're going to be asking God for grace for healing. Um, and then... Uh, and we're also lifting up Jeanette as well, um, Johnny's good friend. Um, and rain for Haiti. It still hasn't rained there, and the water that you can see that's around the country is receding away from the land. So it's serious drought, people, serious drought. So um, Elijah prayed for rain after three years, and it came. So I think we can pray for rain, and God will, will, uh, will show himself mighty to be merciful. One, one last thing, and I'm just going to put this out as an um, opportunity to serve. The 8th of September is coming up quickly, but uh, a need has arisen for um, someone to give um, a helping ride to Marshall Junction at uh, 7.30 on, on the 8th. So if uh, you feel like you have that time in your schedule, the 8th, is that a Friday? It's Thursday. Thursday. Right, so the ride is to Marshall Junction and back. Uh, ponder it, let me know, and, uh, and get with me after service if you are available on the 8th to be wheels. Okay, thanks, Johnny. And, and she wants to be generous. So if you guys can, if you have the time on Thursday the 8th to give a ride, uh, let me know. Or I will help you. Okay, um, so... As we prepare to rejoice in the Lord, does anyone else have a prayer request they want to lift up today? Okay, well then let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we do lift up to you the cares of our hearts. Those circumstances and those situations that are troubling for us. That may cause us suffering, God. God, we ask that we might learn how to forget about our suffering and remember the sufferings of others, God, as we remember Eva and Simon and Ashley and Frank and Memphis and Carrie. God, we ask that you continue to heal and to restore Sonny Vansel. God, I pray that you would minister to his heart as he is grieving. Be with Robert and Brenda and the rest of the family as they take care of their dad. God, be with Marita Rissler. Thank you that she is continuing to mend. Be with the gardeners, Lord, and the Tolsons who are uh, getting ready for last phases with Chris's dad. God, I just ask that you would be a comforter to them. God, we ask for your healing in Chris's body and in Jeanette's body. And Lord Jesus, we do ask that you send your reign on the country of Haiti. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord Jesus, won't you help me today? Help me to speak your words clearly and that this may be a blessing. To all those who hear it, in Jesus' name, amen. All right.
So we have been enjoying this book of the Philippian letter for five weeks now, and it never seems to get old. I'm, I keep unpacking more and more and more in verses that we have just been in. So to get our context, I'm just going to read for us verses two, chapter 2, 14 through 18 as we get our context this morning. Do all things without complaining or disputing that you might become harmless and blameless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you, whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Yes, I am. if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. Now, we didn't get very far in our study last week. I had the the first few verses, I think 12 and and 13, that went with that. And, uh, And it is God who is at work in us. It's where we spent the majority of our thrust, is that God is at work within us. We have the the passive view or the quietest view that we just let go and and let God, or or we've got the the active pious or the piety view where where we are good working it. We are making sure that we are working our faith, and and if we're not working our faith, we start having trouble with ourselves. And uh, and, and it's it's a, a legalistic mindset, really. And we were finding out that which one's right the answer is yes. It's kind of weird, but the answer is yes. They're both right. Because if, like Paul was saying to you, as you have always obeyed, you have always obeyed, not as much in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. He, he's letting them know, you guys have always obeyed. You're, you're doing the work. You're doing the work, but it's God, in verse 13, who is at work in you to both will and to work for his good pleasure. So that's where we're coming from when he says, do all things without grumbling or disputing, or complaining or disputing, in other words, for it is grumbling, right? And when we look at this grumbling or complaining and disputing, we have to see that this disputing word in the Greek isn't necessarily arguing back to back with someone. It's more along the lines of our thoughts. What are we thinking about? What, what are we doing when things don't go our way? Are we, are, we, are we holding God on trial with the lawyer in our mind, letting him know how many ways this isn't right for this to be happening to me? And that's an internal grumbling, isn't it? It's a grumbling that nobody else hears. And if you're really good at grumbling on the inside without showing that on the outside, you're going to have a lot of people fooled. Unfortunately, you're not going to shine like Paul is telling us to shine. Paul helps us so much to understand how great God's power at work in us is when it comes to this thing called faith. He's asking us to trust God in such a way that we will not question anything that he says. Because if God tells us it's like this, and we put up a resistance to it, then we've fallen into what he's told us not to do, and that's grumble and complain. God set the universe in order. I think he has all of the fine details worked out for us already. And he was so kind, and he was so good to us, that he laid out his character for us from page one, to the end. Every book is a manifestation of God's character for us. 
And so Paul is taking this manifestation. Look, if anybody understood the law, it was Paul. In chapter 3, he says to us, do you think you have something to boast about? You actually think you're that good of a person. I'm better than you. Well, that doesn't sound very Christian, Paul. I thought you just told us to think of ourselves less than. And he's just making a point. Because Paul was the creme de la creme of the religious elite. People went to Paul if they had a question. And so he's talking to everybody else. And he's saying, this is how I I followed God before I knew Jesus. I was blameless. I was blameless on account of the law. But Paul hated Christ, and he hated the church. So let's not put too much stock in in Paul's claim there on blameless in that kind of way, but blameless in regard to the law. I followed every letter. I did every requirement, every, every prescription that was given for us to follow. Paul followed. And so he kind of helps us out because I don't know about you, but I don't quite follow like Paul follows. He's, he's on a whole nother level. Now, he's still an imperfect man, which is beautiful because he's still pointing to a perfect Savior. Paul always points back to a perfect Savior. And he points back to his work. In Hebrews 13, 21, this is what we hear by the author of Hebrews. May God equip you with everything good, that you may do His will, working in us that which is pleasing in His sight. Through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. So here it is, we find that God is asking us to obey His commandment. Obey. Obey what we have found in sacred scripture. Follow it. Follow it. Because the people that are leading us, Paul, Peter, James, they're all leading us to follow Christ. Not their idea, not their interpretation, but to follow Christ. In Colossians, he talks, while he was in prison, he wrote this letter. He, he wrote to the Colossians, he said, For this I toil. His toil is his ministry, struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works in me. So, Paul is teaching us that all of this ministry is all a vertical flow. Everything, this energized ministry is all coming from God. It's not Paul gritting it out. It's not Paul making it happen. Because when we start gritting it out and making it happen, what do we start doing? We start finding things that are wrong with what we're doing. We start giving ourselves reasons to grumble. Reasons to argue. I don't know about you, but if, if I ever am in an argument with my wife and I'm not talking to her and she's not talking to me, things get really quiet. And then we don't really know what's going on. If you're grumbling and complaining, and, and, and Paul, I, I believe, is really thrusting this a lot toward our relationship with the Lord. Are we grumbling and complaining against what God has prescribed for us? Or are we truly allowing this perfect work that God, in chapter 1, is going to bring to completion in the day of Christ Jesus? Are we actively allowing the work to happen? Maybe that's a good way to look at the way that we're supposed to engage this. We're not supposed to pull up our our britches and, 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 and just make it. No, Paul is, is, is teaching us that you better, you better surrender and let all of God's grace and power just flood into you so that you can do this work. Because if not, your head is going to get in the way. Your heart is going to get in the way of this work. He's telling us to put everything into it. And then he's telling us this. He says that you may become harmless and blameless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. How in the world are you and I going to be without fault? How is that going to be possible? 
I don't know about you, but I think I woke up today and I probably sinned already. I, how are we going to be blameless or harmless? Well, thank God for the shed blood of Jesus. Remember in Peter, he told us that we were sprinkled with blood for what? Obedience. We were sprinkled with the blood of Jesus so that we would be obedient to Jesus. We want to follow the Lord. We want to do what he's saying so that we would be without fault. And, and, and look at what we're dealing with. A crooked and perverse generation. This world does not have anything for us. If you are still looking to the world, if I am still looking to the world for that thing that I just need to keep going, I'm taking myself away from the source of true power, from the source of true joy. And he tells us that we should be blameless and harmless so that you and I will shine like lights in the world. It's hard to shine if we're covered in muck. Isn't it? I don't know about you, but some of those cars, I had one. Our G6 did a horrible thing with the headlights, and they just phased over something awful, and you couldn't see out of them. High beams were acceptable. People coming on traffic didn't care that the high beams were on. We had to clean that off. And once we cleaned it off, boom, we had, we had headlights again. Folks, if, if we've been called to shine and we're living in the world and being a part of the world, then we're not going to shine. We're not going to be any different than anyone else. Remember that Paul is talking to a group of believers who are being persecuted, who are being troubled about this Jesus thing. We don't have any trouble. We don't have any trouble about Jesus. We should be excited to look just like him wherever we go. And this is how we look like Jesus, folks. This is the answer. Hold fast to the word of truth or the word of life. It's the same. Hold fast to the word. If you stray from the word, you will stray from God. It's that simple and it's that easy, guys. We forget entirely too much. For crying out loud just last week, forgive me. I, I put the wrong word in on verse uh, 13. I, I said, work out your faith and, and please forgive me. We don't, excuse me, verse 12, it, it, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So if you caught that, uh, forgive me. Um, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And so if we're working out salvation, this thing that God is doing in us with fear and trembling, if, if we're going to approach God for who he is, we're not going to come at him as if we were right, would we? I've done that before in, in, in the professional sense. I was in the military, and uh, for those of you who don't know, and my, my last duty assignment, I was like the second executive assistant to the commander. He was a full bird colonel, okay, 06, big time. And, uh, and, and when I was nearing my time in the Air Force, I got real good at the grumbling and complaining thing. And, uh, and my commander asked, let me rephrase that. My commander said, I want you to call the, the commanding heads, all of the department heads, for a pizza party for the, for the secretary. It's her birthday. And I said, sir, she doesn't want a birthday party. The incredulous look on that man's face will haunt me for the rest of my life. Why in the world would an E5 be telling an O6, you got that one wrong, with even out the sir? No, sir, she doesn't want to party. Oh, yeah, bad move, right? Bad call. Folks, Jesus 
outranks a colonel. We don't have the luxury to tell him no. We might think that we do. We'd call it grace. That's, that's, not, that's not what we're being taught here. We're being taught to cling to the, to the, to the word of, of life. Cling to it. If we're going to cling to it, it doesn't matter what's coming. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. Because his instruction is here. His peace is found here. If I want to have joy in my life, it's found here. The encouragement is on every page. Even if you read the part about babies getting their heads bashed by stones. Because that's a hurting heart that desperately wants vindication. That's a a hurting heart that desperately wants God to act on their behalf. We want, we want God to act on our behalf, don't we? We want Him to move mightily in our life. We don't want to just sit around and maybe He will do something great or maybe He won't for me. No, let's activate our faith. This is purposeful holiness. We don't just try to look good. If we just try to look good, then we're just trying to look good. We're not doing anything. He wants it from the heart. Sincere. Sincere. I love to think about God's help in this faith walk of ours. Because I keep getting that image of the little boy who is standing outside of, of the, on the driveway and, and is going like this and the car hatch opens up. And then he goes, and it goes down and he goes, And the dad, of course, is standing inside, clicking the button every time. But don't you see that that's kind of what Paul is saying? He said, man, I worked harder than all of y'all. And I'm not perfect yet, he'll tell us. Not perfect yet. But I'm working it. I'm going for it. Listen, St. Augustine or St. Augustine, however you want to say it, said this. He said, pray. As though everything depended on God. And work as though everything depended on you. Don't you see the beautiful exchange there? Peter would tell us, if we're going to do this thing, we're going to do it ectones, fully, fully stretched out, fully exerted, max effort. Paul is teaching the same max effort effort. I left you with half of a piece of what happened with Moses in the wilderness in Exodus. And so, um, sorry, one too many. Um, Those Israelites freaked out when Pharaoh came a-coming as they were camped out on the shore of the Red Sea. They freaked out, started complaining, Moses said, stand still and watch the deliverance of the Lord. All right, God, what's happening? He was a little fast, see? He told them to stand still and watch the deliverance of the Lord. The Lord said, what are you talking about? Stand still. Hey, go and do. Go, Moses. Go and put your staff in the water so that they can go walk. God is calling us to walk. And he's giving us everything that we need. This is encouraging, you guys. If Israelites can walk across dry land in the middle of two sea walls, you and I can search for this holiness thing without grumbling and complaining. It tears down the body. It's actually impossible for us to fulfill what Christ is asking of us if we consistently grumble and complain. James helped us with that. In James chapter 3, he said, Few of us should be teachers. Why? Because it's really, really hard to control the tongue. He says, My brethren, let not many of you be teachers, for we all stumble in many things. And if anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Pretty amazing. 
if we can get a hold of this grumble, complaining, arguing thing that's inside of our mouth, then we will be able to control our entire body. Jesus never did that. He never grumbled or complained. So he was able to control his whole body. James pulls the example of Christ. Paul pulls the example of Christ in every way so that you and I can know who we're to look like and who we're to aspire to. Jesus shined and he shined from the tree. We know that Jesus was betrayed. We know that Jesus was maligned. We know that Jesus was lied about. False testimony was given. He was beaten for our transgressions and crushed for our sin. For our sin. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Let him heal you so that you can shine. He is able. And he's sending us to a world that is dying. Time is running out. It's time to redeem the time. Jesus knew that he couldn't wait any longer. He knew that his time was short. And he told the disciples to go and get the meal ready. And so they did. And so after supper, Jesus took a loaf of bread and he broke it. He blessed it and he gave it to them. And he said, take, eat, for this is my body broken for you. For the forgiveness of sins. Eat this, all of you, and as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it to them. And he said, drink this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Drink this, all of you. And as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Family of God, this meal is for the children of God. Come and eat, partake of the Lord's Supper.
Father, we sit grateful before you now, having received this precious meal, this opportunity to remember a sacrifice that would cancel our debt and make a way for us to know you. Jesus, thank you for being enough. Help us to remember that we serve the God who is enough for us. Won't you change our heart, O oh God? Remove from us that need to grumble or complain or to murmur, to argue with one another or with you, Lord God. Help us to walk in the peace of forgiveness that your son purchased for us. We are eternally grateful for the price you paid, Lord Jesus. And in humble gratitude, we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, won't you stand? As we prepare to leave this place, let's get out of here with some serious joy. Oh, some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to that home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, oh, I'll fly away, oh, glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days and then I'll blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, beloved. Happy Memorial Day, everybody.